Suzuki's Hayabusa is probably one of the most famous motorcycles ever built. Even people who've never heard of motorcycles have probably heard of the Hayabusa. The original Busa arrived just in time to see the end of the last century, and now 21 years into this century, it's back. Five years ago, emissions rules here in Europe saw off the second generation Busa, but now its bad breath has been cured and the third generation has landed. The UK launch of the 2021 Busa took place a few weeks ago and we scored an invite. Lucky us. The key ingredients on this bike are the same as the second generation bike. It's a 1340cc inline four cylinder motor that's more about grunt really rather than outright horsepower. It's wrapped in an aluminium chassis that's been revised to make it more comfortable on the wrists. But the big changes really center around electronics and rider aids. The second generation booster, the one that fell foul of those emissions rules, had a list of rider aids that went all the way to one, ABS. Now that list is actually a list. You get power modes, traction control, anti-wheelie, engine braking control. There's a quick shifter that works up and down through the gearbox. You get launch control. Cruise control means you can set your speed at anything from 19 miles per hour to 124 miles per hour. There's an adjustable speed limiter that keeps you safe in average speed camera zones. It's got cornering ABS. Slope dependent control means you can keep it neat when you're braking down a hill. And hill hold control means hill starts are a breeze when you're pointing uphill. And if that's not enough, there's more. The hazard lights come on when you brake really hard. Low RPM assist means the revs rise by about 250 RPM to avoid stalling. Easy start means one press of the button will get the starter going until the engine fires up. And then there's a new dash that has all sorts of info to distract you from what's going on up ahead, including a lean angle display. The most I saw on the launch was 33 degrees, which is never going to threaten the MotoGP boys. I think actually I'd rather not know. So that's what it does, but what's it actually like? It really shouldn't be so easy to go so fast. The Booster's 187 brake horsepower peak isn't a match for the latest big purebred sports bikes, which now top 200 horsepower, but it doesn't have to be. Its speed is built on a mountain of mid-range, not a skyscraper of reps. The Booster feels frisky, not frenzied. Suzuki's marketing folks have dubbed the Busa the refined beast. The two parts of that title might seem inherently contradictory, that's what I thought, but beast is what I was expecting and refined is what I actually got. Now the Busa with its fresh electronic trickery behaves with manners and class. Even in mode A, it's full fat riding mode. Yes, that word was class. Suzuki have long had a reputation for budget finish and in your face looks. The Busa deviates from that path. Looks wise, it's massive exhaust cans are divisive. That's the standout issue on looks, but even those cans are not universally disliked. And overall, the design is sleeker than that beaky Gen 2 Busa. This bike is back to the kind of styling that put the original on so many bedroom walls. The big question really is whether the Busa is still relevant. But in this era of average speed cameras, congested roads, and the growing success of the campaign for speeding to be seen as antisocial, I'd actually argue it's possibly more relevant than it's ever been. The UK government is saying sales of petrol and diesel vehicles will be banned by 2030. If you believe they'll go through with that, then you've got nine years left. So if a bike like this is something you've considered, then you might wanna get on with it because it might not be long before a booster can only be something you wished you'd owned.